In this episode, we're going to investigate STP loop prevention. I'll show you how to do it. We'll talk about the concepts along the way. What we're going to do is we're going to observe the operation of spanning tree protocol in a simple switch network that has redundant paths. We'll be observing spanning tree port states and watch the spanning tree convergent process. We're going to describe the operation of spanning tree protocol. And then finally, we're going to explain how spanning tree protocol prevents switching loops while allowing redundancy in switch networks. Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. This episode is part of my series on configuration examples for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. <laughs> Investigate spanning tree protocol loop prevention. In this lab, we're going to look at the spanning tree protocol. We're going to see how spanning tree prevents uh, loops in, with our switches and then also how it allows redundancy to happen if we do happen to have a failure in that network. Here's our instructions. Observe a converged spanning tree instance. Verify our connectivity. Ping from PC1 to PC2 that there's connectivity between the hosts. So I'm going to go ahead open up PC1. Right here, slide that over, make my window a little bit bigger, click on my command prompt. Then I'm going to go ahead and type in ping and then the IP address of PC2. You can see that right here, which is 192.168.1.101. We send out our four echo requests. We get four echo responses. We got 100% success, no losses. So we have our connectivity. Step two, view spanning tree status on each switch. Use the show spanning tree VLAN one command to gather information about the spanning tree status. Complete the table below. That's this table right in this area. For the purposes of the activities, only consider information about the gigabit trunk ports. Best Ethernet ports are access ports that have end devices connected to them or not part of the inter switch trunk based spanning tree so all we're going to do is look at the gig ports right here that we have listed okay i'm going to go ahead and close my pc1 window i'm going to open up switch one right here click on that brings me into my cli i automatically make the window a little bit bigger so it formats fine see if it's smaller some of this stuff wraps around formatting is not as nice slide it out we're pretty good go ahead and hit enter type enable to get into our privilege exec mode no password set up on here so we don't have to worry about that and then our command here was show spanning dash tree space vlan one go ahead and hit enter a couple things we can see right away we can see vlan one is the VLAN we're looking at. We can see our root ID and our priority. 32,769. So we have the default priority of 32,768 plus one for VLAN number one. That gives us our 32,769. Here's the MAC address of our switch. And then down here we have we have three connections. The fast ethernet is the connection to the PC. And then the gig connections are connections to the other switches. Looking at our chart here, we are seeing that on switch one, gig port, what is the status? So on gig one here, our status is forwarding looking here at switch one gig zero one we can see that the status is forwarding so we can go over here in our chart fill that in and it is not a root bridge so no it is not we can look at switch one gig two that status is in forwarding also but we can go ahead and list it as forwarding and once again this is still not our root bridge Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to open up switch two. Switch two, make the window a little bit bigger. 
hit enter, type enable, and then our command show space, spanning dash tree space VLAN space one. Go ahead and look at, look at our information. Once again, we are in VLAN one, priority of 3,000, 32,768 plus one gives us the number we have there. We have our Mac address. And then this switch is the root bridge. So this bridge here is our root bridge. Coming down here, we have our interfaces. We got two gig interfaces that connect to the other switches. And then we have the fast ethernet that connects to the PC. So gig zero one is in the forwarding state. And once again, this is, this bridge is the root. So is this the root bridge? Yes, it is. Gig zero two, we can see that that's also in the forwarding state. And we're still on the same switch. So yes, this is the root bridge. Once again, that shows, that shows from right here. Then Go ahead and close out switch two, open up switch three. We can go ahead and enter in that same command. Same command here. Enable show spanning dash three space VLAN one. Oh, gotta spell VLAN right. So I up arrow once, left arrow over, hit backspace to delete it, make the correction and hit enter. We have two gig connections that goes to the other switches. There was no PC, so we don't have any fast ethernet ports there. Gig zero one is a forwarding port. And once again, it doesn't say up here, it gives us a cost. The cost is how much does it cost to get to the root bridge? If it was the root bridge, it would say this bridge is the root. So gig zero one is in the forwarding state. And this is not a root bridge, so no. Gig zero two, gig zero two is in the status is BLK, and that's the blocking status. So it is blocking right now. And once again, we are not on the root bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and close that window. Packet Tracer uses a different link light on one of the connections between the switches. If you look right here on switch three, the gig zero two connection, you can see that it's an orange or amber circle. All the rest of them are green triangles, but this is an orange or amber circle right here. What do you think this link light means? Well, what that means here is, cause this was in blocking state, so we're not forwarding any. This indicates that the port is in blocking state and is not forwarding data. What path will the frames take to get from PC1 to PC2? Well, the path, because this is blocking right here, it's going to go from PC1 to switch one to switch two to PC2. It's going to take this route. It won't go the other way because we have that one blocking port in there that stops loops from happening. And so the path we're going to take is PC1 to switch one to switch two to PC okay so why do frames not travel through s3 why don't the frames go up through s3 it's because this port here is in the blocking state that g02 is in a blocking state so our answer here because port g0 slash 2 on S3 is in a blocking state. No frames are so no frames are sent or received 
Um, yeah. Port. Why has spanning tree placed a port in the blocking state? So why is this over here in a blocking state? Well, if this was forwarding frames here, we could have a loop because the frame would come into switch one, switch one, then forwards it out of all the ports it didn't receive it in. So it'd send it out gig zero one and send it out gig zero two, switch three would get it. Once again, send it out all there, update its cam tables. Then it would go to switch two. It would get that frame, send it out all ports and it would go back down to switch one and the PC two, thereby going back to the switch again. And that just starts a whole looping process. That original frame that came to S1 would go up here to S2. S2 sends it out, it would loop all the way back here. It would send a second copy of that frame to PC2. Now, PC2's got two copies of the same frame. There's just a lot of problems in here. But if we block this frame here, that loop doesn't happen. And so to answer our question, if all ports could forward frames a switching loop would exist in the network switching loops and degrade network performance and even cause a network to fail. And of course, you don't want your network to fail because most businesses depend on their network today. So if the network goes down, their company shuts down. Maybe not completely shuts down, but what they can produce is greatly reduced. Takes care of part one. I hope you're liking this episode on practical configuration examples. Leave a comment on what you think about these configuration examples. If you still have a question or comment, please let me know below. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. On part two, observe spanning tree convergence. Remove the connection between S1 and S2. Open a CLI window on switch three, issue the command show spanning tree VLAN one leave the window open and then select the delete tool and delete the connection between S1 and S3. Okay, go up to switch three, open up our command prompt, select the delete tool right here. It's a little semi square box pointing to the left with an X in it. That's our delete tool. You want to delete the selected item. I'm not sure what it is, so I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to hit the delete tool. It turns into an X. And then click the cable that connects S1 and S2. So this cable right here, I'm going to click on the X. It's going to disappear. That cable's gone. Observe spanning tree convergence. Quickly return to the CLI and issue the show spanning tree VLAN one command. You can see here, it says blocking. Gig two is in blocking. Gig one is in forwarding. Use the up arrow to recall that command and issue repeatedly until you absorb, until you observe a change. And now all of a sudden we went from blocking to listening. And so we are in the listening state. Now, we went into the learning state. We're learning the past. We're still in the learning and now we went to the forwarding. So what did we see happen in the status of our port during this process? Well, first it was locking. It then became LSN, which is listening. Good, I spelled that right. Then it was LRN, 
which was learning. It's the type only because that bothers me. And finally, it was FWD for forwarding. So it went through the different states. It went from blocking to listening. So it, it hears what's going on, what BDUs are being passed to it. Then we started the learning process, doing our calculations, figuring out which is the best route to the root bridge. And then once we've got that all done, it was the forwarding process. And once again, the listening stage by default takes 15 seconds. The learning stage takes 15 seconds. So to go from blocking to forwarding, that took us a total of 30 seconds to do. You observe the transition in port status that occurs as spanning tree ports move from blocking to forwarding. Verify connectivity by pinging from PC1 to PC2. Your ping should be successful. I'm going to go up here, close my S3 window, open up. Notice how my cursor is still the X. I have to go from the deleting tool to the selection tool. That's this dotted box here with the arrow. Go ahead and click that. And now my cursor is the arrow. So I can go ahead and click on PC1. I can open up my command prompt. I can go ahead and type ping. And then my IP address for PC2 is 192.168.1.101. And the ping works. Ping works even though I deleted that connection between S1 and S2. Spanning tree saw that connection going down. It went in, it went through the process to figure out what the best route was. Now that, that connection's down, and we have a valid connection to our destination. Are any ports showing an orange link that indicates the port is is in a spanning tree state other than forwarding? Why or why not? Well, looking here, we have all green triangles. Because there is no loop in here, we have no redundant path. We don't have to have spanning tree block one of those ports to stop those loops. We don't need any ports other than all forwarding ports. And our answer here is no orange lights are showing because there are no longer redundant paths in the network. A correction that takes us down to the end of the lab. That was Packet Tracer Lab 5.1.9 Investigate Spanning Tree Protocol Loop Prevention. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuration examples. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on practical configuration examples for the CCNA. I've created four wonderful playlists for you on the CCNA. These episodes, I go through all the concepts that Cisco calls out for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.